giving a talk as part of the lecture series on climate change run by the CSAP, Centre for Science and Policy. It's going to be live streamed as part of the Cambridge Climate Lecture Series. What are you going to be talking about? What I'm going to be talking about there is work that we're doing um, trying to help understand how to respond to climate change in terms of building resilience. And so what we're been doing is in collaboration with Google DeepMind. We're trying to use the latest data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence techniques to bring together both the climate projections and the wealth of data that exists um, in terms of current weather and the impacts of current weather to try to help um, provide information that people can use to base decisions into the future about how we build resilience. For example, we're working with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, who help um, fund projects in developing countries. And we have got a particular project where we're looking at Egypt. There was a big heat wave in August 2015 in Egypt, which resulted in scores of deaths in Cairo, particularly because there's rather poor air conditioning in the buildings in Cairo. And so we want to try to understand exactly what the future projections of air conditioning use okay. in Cairo into the future under different climate change scenarios might be and consequently how an organisation such as the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development could go in and this is an exact case of where potentially an investment could be made to help bolster climate resilience but also would have knock-on impacts in terms of more general development in that part of the world. And the other aspect that we're really trying to start to tackle from a science perspective, which is, a, which is also a challenge, is trying to understand the correlated risks. An obvious example would be the El Nino phenomenon, mm -hmm. which has impacts on weather throughout the world, but those impacts are highly correlated. Right. And unless you properly understand those correlations, you don't properly quantify the systemic risk. El Nino is one example where weather systems can be geographically correlated. Well, okay. Another example would be in 2010, there was a strong heat wave in Russia that caused wildfires and then was connected through to impacts on food prices globally. And there was also a severe flood in Pakistan. And those two apparently quite distinct weather events were actually connected by shifting weather patterns. So they were, the risk of them was actually correlated. So it's understanding mm. these correlated risks. 